respect, you know, the disenchantment and dispassion. I have never understood the difference. And is there a difference, or it is just a? Uh, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> there is a difference. Okay, disenchantment is kind of like uh, in the old days when I was growing up, everybody went bowling on Wednesday night. Or they went to the mall. When the malls opened, everybody went to the mall. They they have this thing they do once a week. And now you just don't have any interest in doing that anymore. You're disenchanted with the with outside the it, with playing around in this <laughs> conventional reality. You are disenchanted because you uh, you come to a place where you understand enough of this ultimate reality and the peace that is involved in it when you live in it with full understanding that you you're not interested in that and Bhante tells the story of going to a party in, in California when he was just starting to learn meditation and he was studying with Usulananda he was caught in a situation where everybody was you know drinking and being car carousing not carousing but you know they were very loud and everything and then uh, he said it's a funny thing about this because they all moved into the other room <laughs> except for two people and the three of them sat down on a couch and had a lovely conversation but you're not interested in the carousing anymore you know you're not interested in the the, vi the heavy vibration because you're practicing this way you're calming down all the time and it changes you you get very level but it's not disturbing you know because you because you want this is the part about inviting deeper inspection okay you heard the thing in the beginning about this is easy to understand immediately effective here and now inviting deeper inspection and um is going to be untouched by time saying that this is the part about is going to um inviting deeper inspection and you want to know where this will go. This passion is a real turning off. It's a real turning off of total, it's like a total, almost complete turning off of reactions. Okay, and for the person who is angry reaching to disenchantment, you're just not, you're disenchanted with getting angry anymore. When you're training, you're working, coaching somebody with anger management. They, they, and they, at first they, they learn the link and they begin to realize how, wow, I'm personally involved with this. And they start letting go. And as they let go, they discover life is so much easier, so much beautiful, more beautiful, so, so calm and so real in the present time. I see a sunset and I'm not going to compare it to anything. I'm just there with the sunset. I remember standing on the bridge and um, not having anything come up at all except the sunset and seeing just this sunset just for what it was with everything that was happening across the water. We were on a, I was on a bridge with another monk. We were coming back from somewhere to Aurangabad and we stopped and got out of the cab to see this. And we're standing there on the bridge and it was just like you were right there. There was nothing there coming and there was nothing there that was past. Everything was just right there and totally, are you ready for this? <laughs> totally grokking. So now to understand G-R-O-K, -okay, <laughs> you have to go read um, Heinlein's book on Stranger in a Strange Land. And you have to read that book to find out what that term is. It's a science fiction book from the 60s, and it's very short, and it's very famous. He won all kinds of awards with it when he wrote it. And um, this term, grok, is understanding whatever is happening or whatever you're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, or touching by becoming it. Like the Irish person that says the trees can talk. How do we know the trees can talk? Because we become the tree. We sit there and feel the heartbeat of the tree and the flow of life in the tree. And eventually if we're there long enough, we hear the tree talk very slowly, but... <laughs> Yeah, very slowly, but we hear the tree talk, you see? So by, by uh, in the 60s, it was kind of fun when this novel happened because everybody would say, I'm going out with you, I want to grok you. It didn't have anything to do with uh, relations. It's, I want to see you, really see you and nothing else. That's what it was about, you know?
You know the movie Avatar? Did you see Avatar? Do you remember that? I see you in the movie? That was from Grokking. The case, source of that was Grokking. The, the producer that did that was our age. <laughs> and he came out of, I grok you. <laughs> you see? And what you're doing is, in, in dispassion, you grok something, but the emotion doesn't consume you. So something can be very, very pleasurable without being exhausting at all. See? It can be extremely relaxing and wonderful. People misunderstand dispassion and it gets distressing. And for them, where should we go with this? But like I tried to explain to you in this talk, uh, the Brahma Viharas have a declared destination, you see? And that's the Brahma, the Brahma Lokas. And to end up passing away from this life and being born into the Brahma Lokas as another being sets you up to become an Arahat. You're not going to be born back here. So you get as far as Anagami, you're not coming back here. You see? Again and again and again and again and again. That's, that's done, okay? But you haven't finished with Arahatship uh, completely. And, you know, so when you go to, you're in Brahma Lokas, that's when you finish as an Arahat and Arahat or Arahat fruition there. See? That's how they talk about it. A lot of people put down practicing metta because they think it will not help them reach Nibbana. And this is very, very mistaken. Very mistaken, okay? And um, it is mistaken because, because one thing is metta, the thing is in our center, some people say, some people like to say metta takes you all the way to Nibbana. Okay, it is true, but it's not correct. <laughs> and why I'm saying it that way is metta culminates at the fourth jhana. And karuna culminates in infinite space. And mudita culminates in infinite consciousness. And um, the equanimity culminates in the, um, the level of base of nothingness. Now, the base of nothingness is the seventh level before the... Uh, neither perception or not perception and then you fall into cessation okay so the point is it doesn't take you all the way to nibbana but neither does breathing because if you're looking at breathing in training for breathing meditation the breathing meditation you keep reducing the breath from this big in the beginning down, 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 till it's only a hair's width. And then you're at nothingness and you make mind starts watching mind. That's it. Your mind starts watching mind and that's all that's left. You're completely um, reduced out of any hindrances or any personal concerns or anything. You're right there, very, very deep. You're sitting then for anywhere from two hours to four hours. Some people sit for six hours like that. It's very, 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 very quiet, very healing for the body because there's no pressure on any of the organs, any of the circulatory system, the brain, no stress, nothing, absolutely none. This is a very, very healing when we teach a person how to do a uh, power sitting. How can I get two hours of rest in about 10 or 15 minutes? We teach them how to empty out absolutely everything that's happened in the morning and anything in front of them and get into this place that is this present time. Sit in your office, close the door, turn off your phone, turn off your any connection for 10 minutes. And if you can drop in for 10 minutes, they tell us that's about the value of about two hours of sleep, 10 to 15 minutes max, okay? 
this is something I wish all the nurses could understand that they could do at the hospital right now and all the staff at the hospital, because I know what it was like. I used to staff a hospital and I know how exhausted people get. But if you go in a closet, even if it's a utility room and sit on a bucket and just stay there for 10 minutes and you just drop and you just watch inside and if you want, you send the loving kindness over yourself and you just drench yourself in a waterfall of loving kindness. And then if you near the end, you want to let it shine out, you shine, let it shine out and you keep smiling quietly, no noise, 10 minutes. And then you come out, you wash your face and you're just ready to go again. You have much more energy.